Collimating your hyperstar could be one of the most frustrating things that you ever have to do. Some of you have just got it nailed down and things just work out. You've got great samples of your telescope, filters, and everything else. For some of us, we have to resort to other options and actually put a lot of time into it to get things close. It's in my humble opinion that you'll never get your hyperstar telescope sensor and everything 100% correct. And the bigger sensor you have, the more challenge you will, and the larger sensor you have, the more challenging it will be. But I have finally got the best collimation with the camera sensor that I want to use. And I'm gonna tell you guys how I did it and give you some tips and tricks along the way. I'm Chad, this is the Easy Astro Images channel and we're gonna collect some photons today. So it's one of the most repeated questions over and over on Facebook groups and forums is how do you collimate your hyperstar? According to the instructions and in Starzona, it's a pretty simple process. You turn one of the push screws, you pull one of the pull screws in and out, in and out until you get a perfectly shaped donut. If you've spent hours outside trying to do this, you know that is not the case. So let's start with step one. The first thing is secondary mirror centering to your primary. It's been discussed. It's in a big long post that's a little old now that floats around looking down the tube, all that kind of stuff like that. My number one thing is that that should be your last resort. Do not touch your secondary mirror at all when it comes to the alignment. Just go for the hyperstar collimation first. And if things truly do not work out and you have a problems, then inspect your secondary. I actually ruined a scope uh, C6 that I had to send back to Celestron by doing this kind of stuff. So definitely just kind of leave that alone and go right to the hyperstar. So you should be able to set everything up with the correct spacing. You should have got the right adapters from Starzona based on what camera you're using, whether or not you're using a filter drawer. So we're gonna assume that all that stuff is just beautiful and that you are collimated and everything else to go. The first thing that you wanna do, of course, is find yourself a good focus point. So you wanna record that number if you're using an autofocuser. If you're not using an autofocuser, and then it might be a little bit more difficult, but it shouldn't be that hard. It would just add a little bit more time maybe to the process. Now you can see here in my fancy drawing that I prepared for a collimation video, I'm demonstrating basically the donut, the airy disc in the middle, and then of course the hyperstar itself with the push pull screws. So I went through this a lot, trying to figure out which way, if I had say a thick side, whether I need to push that in or pull that in one or the other, but all this was really difficult and you kind of end up chasing your tail. Now, the reason I say that is because you can actually have yourself in focus on and collimated on one side of focus, but then if you move to the other side of focus, you might not be in collimation or the collimation may be worse. Now, I use Owl's Collimation Aid to kind of get things roughly close. This is what I was using before. It's a simple overlay that just kind of goes on and it's no problem. And you can see here by just kind of looking at it and eyeballing it that my collimation doesn't look too bad. Everything is fairly concentric. But when we're dealing at F2, these small little differences can totally, totally keep you out of collimation. So I do something like that. And then of course do an autofocus and you know, kind of be somewhat happy with my stars. You can see that I would get a decent star shape, decent FSR, a decent HSR. But then when the audio focus routine would complete and I would move back out of focus, there you go. You're out of collimation again. And you go and repeat the process again and you might make things better, you might make things worse, they might be the same. And this is a perfect example here. I don't look too bad right here. And then I go to the other side of focus and boom, look how bad that looks. So this is where the tri off mask really comes in handy because it allowed me to actually collimate while I was in focus, which is what we want. You know, it's a little tricky because you've got these six stripes that are coming off, I'll show you here. And, you know, there's different ways to try to isolate what of the three groups of push-pull screws that you're working with. I'm, I found the best for me basically was just to start making adjustments and figure out which line was moving and then just go from there. It was not helpful trying to cover a couple of them up 
to isolate it and kind of rotate this to figure out what was going on. By the way, this tri off mask uh, came from uh, Buckeye Stargazer, Joel, and it allows you, it's in multiple pieces, so it allows you to just get it on, snap it together right over your Hyperstar, so that way you don't have to unplug and do all that kind of nonsense with your cables. And once you get it, you can just tighten everything down and set it and forget it. So let's take a look at my process and the results from last night. So I found a good focus point to start off with here, and you can see roughly where we are at. You can see that we've got good focus because we can see all six of the actual parts of the Batonoff mask. And the two on the outside are basically your focus position. And then the one running through the middle is actually what will control is, is your collimation screw. So you can see that like we're pretty close, but again, like I said, we definitely are far enough out where we are gonna get some pretty crazy looking stars. So what I did was just try to find out which actual screw controlled this stripe right here. So I could try to get it to the middle. And of course I'd move things around and I'd have to refocus a little bit. I kind of kept, you know, my focus as close as I could get during the whole process. So that way I did, I was, you know, for sure what I was doing. So you can see here that we took and made the collimation worse. And then eventually we started bringing it back into the center. This was a different set of screws. And then I moved, just simply moved around to the other sets until I got what I felt was just all of these actual dot, you know, all these actual lines coming off that looked good enough to me. After looking at the images, I see that I probably could have made a little bit more of an adjustment. But, you know, this was pretty much what I settled on right here. And I mean, that looks pretty dang good. Like it's tough to get a little, it's tough to get better than that. Especially, you know, the threads on the Hyperstar, in my opinion, could be a little bit more under tension and there could be a little bit finer. That would help things a lot. The Octopi um, that I had for the Rasa had a lot more finer threads and they were under tension. So that way when you did a unlock, you didn't have a clunk and like the two pieces just didn't move apart, which kind of happens with the Hyperstar. So you always want to be checking all the way around to make sure that all six of your collimation points are snug and you might have to loosen up a group or two in order to move one. So you just want to be real careful with it and be mindful of all that as you're making adjustments. So I ran through an autofocus routine after this, and we can take a look at that right here and see my final HFR was a two, which is pretty good, but I have gotten that before and I have had horrible corners and sides, like not just corners, but you know, we're talking about 25% of the image looking bad with the 183 sensor. But if you look here, as we go corner by corner, you can see that all of my corners are all around 2.5, 2.3, 3, a little bit of curvature out at the end, but nothing, like everything is an actual star, everything is round, and anything else that we need to take care of, we can actually just do in post-processing. So this is definitely made me a happy guy. I couldn't believe that I got it so close. I've honestly been trying this a lot recently and have been miserably failing so much that I pretty much just went with the 533 sensor because it was just easier to deal with. And I don't really think that I even did any better with the 533 sensor. I think this actually turned out a lot better. And there you can see the actual corners. Again, you know, things again are not 100% perfect, but you just got to find good enough. Now, when it's maybe 80 degrees outside, maybe I'll go out there and work on it a little bit. But when it's 15 out, this is definitely going to be good enough for me. And in the end here, I checked it all with Al's collimation aid. 
on both sides of focus, and it was pretty dang close on both sides of focus. I really couldn't tell much of a difference as it racked in and out here after doing some slight readjustments. You could see that that is pretty close, way different than what we had before, where one side of focus would be in collimation and the other side would not. So after we got that done, the best thing I could think of was to try to grab as many shots on the witch head as I could. So I set up a four panel mosaic on that and started firing off on that project. Need to try to get that done here. Hopefully tonight I got everything set up still. So I should just be able to start rocking and rolling right at the beginning. And you can see that uh, we were plate solving here, starting our actual autofocus again, autofocus just working perfectly, star again at a 2.12 HFR, the AVX guiding as good as an AVX can, anywhere from 1.1, 1.2, down to like 0.8, even better at sometimes, but at this pixel scale, we could pretty much have a guide error almost up to like two, I think, and we would be good and not affecting our stars. So in the end, I am a super happy guy. I have been waiting to try to get this thing forever to, to get it collimated and get the 183 on there. I have imaged a lot with this combination since I've got it set up. I mean, for some reason this winter has been, uh, I've had a lot of clear nights and those four to five hour time windows that I've just been able to plunk the C6 and the AVX out there at its really lightweight, but just super high capacity to collect data because it's so fast and just works so well. And now that I got the 183 on there, my panos don't have to be as big. I can do a lot more things with just one panel versus two to four. So Chad is a happy guy right now. So I hope you guys got something out of this and that it will help you in your collimation victory. Please let me know in the comments below. We'll talk to you guys later.